So I was on this stage two years ago. And I talked about 3D animation and what was possible at that point in time with current state of the ecosystem, which honestly wasn't that great. I made a joke about whether it would be possible to create a real games using React Native. And at that point, it was just a silly joke, yeah? Because it was obviously impossible. But now, after two long years, nothing can stop us. Ladies and gentlemen, let me introduce once again React Native Web GPU by William Candilion. Round of applause. <laughs> What, make things, what makes that something is breakthrough? A breakthrough change impossible into possible. It opens new opportunities for further development and sparks your imagination with ideas on how to use it. And I believe that WebGPU is a breakthrough because it makes performant 3D graphics and animation possible in React Native. It gives you a great power and open new possibilities how to use it. To understand why WebGPU 2 is a, such an innovation, we need to understand the chaos across GPU frameworks. Over time, the application and possibilities of GPU have changed a lot. They have evolved from pre-programmed hardware functions for 2D graphics to programmable general-purpose computation unit. And now, GPU serves as backbone for AI and crypto. That's why we ended up in the situation where we have many totally different GPU frameworks. Many companies attempt to create their own solution with own syntax. They were making huge breaking changes across the versions. Sometimes even the same organization work on two different incompatible solutions in the same time. This is not the coincidence that some of those logo looks quite similar. Yeah. And yeah, so it's, it's hard to choose the right one. All of those solutions attempt to solve the same set of problems. Each one tried to achieve the best possible performance. Accessing the GPU depends on operating system and the manufacturer driver, such as NVIDIA or ADM. So the goal was to create a universal multi-platform solution. When you try to cover many platforms with different APIs, it often result in complicated API. So the goal was to create a simple one. But it was just a theory. In reality, it looks a bit different. Those solutions encountered the classic triangle problem, when you can just choose only two vertexes. As a result, Metal is performant and has nice, nice API but it only works with Apple products. But in some cases, it was just pick one rule, and WebGPL was only multi-platform. But in that madness, there appeared some light in the end of the tunnel, and it wasn't the train. That one solution chose different path. They didn't need to pick because they found the right balance between all of them. Meet WebGPU. <laughs> Hello, I am Krzysztof Piaskowy, React Native open source developer at Software Mansion. I mainly work on reanimated, but today I want to tell you how awesome is WebGPU. WebGPU is built on top of native framework for specific platforms. It takes the best part of each solution to leverage them to provide an ergonomic, fast, and multi-platform API. 
Thanks to this approach, WebGPU is fast and truly universal, to the point where you can run it even in React Native. You can almost just copy and paste the code from the browser into your application, and it just works. Because the API between the web implementation of WebGPU and React Native WebGPU is fully compatible. To use tool effectively, it's good to know how they work on the low level. So I am a bit scared about this part that people will hate me uh, for my technical talks because on the last React Native conference, I started explaining assembly code on the stage. So I hope you enjoy your meal and you have plenty energy to handle that. So I like math. Normally, I would start here with explaining the math behind the rendering, but this guy, you can find him somewhere, uh, saved you from that because he for forbade me to show math on the slides. <laughs> <clears throat> so there will be no math today, promise. I mean, almost, <laughs> except this, Sorry, just joking. Instead of that, let's imagine the simple front-end application and database. You can't modify the database directly from the front-end. You need to send the data to the server. It's the same concept with GPU. The GPU is a physically separate unit from the CPU, at least in, small, at least in most of cases. Yeah? The CPU has own RAM memory, while the GPU also has own memory called VRAM. So if you want to apply some filter to an image and display it on the screen, you need to transform data into buffer and send it to the GPU. Also, you need to send information how to modify that data. Those instructions are basically shader, which are essentially programs that can be run on GPU. The GPU starts hundreds or even thousands instances of your program simultaneously, each one processing different small chunk of data. Simple, right? Let's take a, a look closer at the shader. It's just a string. We can't evaluate a string on a GPU, exactly the same like we can execute JavaScript directly on CPU without virtual machine. So we need to compile that string into binary uh, format that will be understandable by GPU. And this is exactly what WebGPU does. Uh, it translates WGSL string into shader code that is understandable by the native driver. And then those drivers compile that code to run it on specific architecture. OK, <clears throat> that's all about how to communicate with GPU. Uh, but let's take a look closer on shader execution. The WebGPU rendering pipeline is pretty simple flow. You send some data to GPU, such as vertex coordinates or their colors. The vertex shader perform 3D operation, uh, applying 3D operation on those vertexes, and handles all math related to positioning triangles in the space and, for example, interacting with the light. The fragment shader slices your 3D model into 2D small pieces, pixels, and then computes the color for each pixel. This is rasterization. And this is the same way how rasterization works, for example, for SVG. In effect, this flow produces a texture that can be displayed on your screen. You might wonder why everyone talking about triangles, why triangles, yeah? Why it can be a simple square? Well, 
Actually, it can be, but approximation of 3D object with triangles give you much better result with same amount of vertexes. I mean this versus this. Those are the same rabbit, or they at least pretending to be. Uh, it is interesting because operating system also uses GPU rendering pipeline to display native views. <clears throat> Let's imagine the simple hierarchy of the views. The UI thread stores a native tree of views and can compute the layout for each view. But the UI thread itself can't, can't display anything. This is the GPU responsibility. UI thread needs to send views data to GPU. Then the view layout data is transferred to GPU memory. The compute shader process that vertex data for each view. The fragment shader computes the color for each pixel. Once the texture is ready, GPU can move it to frame buffer. And now the data from the frame buffer is ready to be sent to a screen and displayed. In most of cases, uh, because of course it depends on system implementation, all native views are represented by a texture on a GPU. So for example, when you apply a transform for a native view, it can be super fast because the GPU just needs to move a texture a bit. However, changing the layout of elements, such changing its size, trigger the recreation of entire texture. You don't need to UI thread to display something on a screen because you can schedule job from any thread. So that means you can use web GPU from any thread without touching UI. You have great power in your hands. You can do whatever you want, including implementing your own native views without relying on the system ones. You can even implement Flutter on that. Isn't fascinating? So let's, uh, let's talk about threads, or even to be more specific, let's talk about worklets. This is no surprise that Reanimated allow us to animate things in React Native on a UI thread. We have used to it. But there is more and more libraries that want to utilize multi-threading capabilities. WebGPU is one of them. It would be great to compute animation in a background thread without interrupting already busy JS or, U or UI thread. Creating the new threads is already possible with reanimated API. But worklets had some limitation. One of the most annoying was that you couldn't run third-party dependencies on them. This is a problem for WebGPU too, because you can't use great solutions like FreeJS or others on different threads. That's why we came came up with the idea of React Native WebGP worklets. This allows you to run some popular 3D tools like FreeJS or TypeGPU with reanimated worklets or gesture handler callbacks. But fortunately, in the near future, we may not need that library at all. The React Native WebGP worklets was just a proof of concept to check what is possible. We have decided to move the worklets logic to standalone package and improve the API to transform it into true multi-threading library. The new worklets will allow you to run third-party dependencies from any thread by default. We want to extend the API to enable flexible task scheduling or memory sharing between threads. If you want to know more, visit the documentation uh, of 
reanimated, visit the discussion. And here is an article that describes new approach in details. It's quite a long document, as you can see, but this is good lecture. Let's go back to WebGPU. Even through WebGPU is an amazing technology that simplify the GPU API like never before, there is still a bit of boilerplate that you need to manage. You must manually describe the memory layout, which is, of course, great because giving you more control and tweak performance. But in most cases, the defaults are all what you need. And even worse, you need to write shader code as a string, which is totally inconvenient because you lose almost all the editor's features. That experience could be better. At Software Mansion, we gained a lot of experience by maintaining libraries like reanimated, gesture handler, and screens. We know what people expect from the software. That's why we believe that simple API and user experience is the key to success. Let me introduce another bright, bright rising star in exciting GPU space. Say hello to Type GPU. <laughs> Type GPU improves your Web GPU pipeline with TypeScript. What does it mean? With Type GPU, you can focus on what matters most, we, on writing shader logic, without worrying about type safety or resource management. This is how you define the shader. Uh, this is how you define the shader buffer using plain Web GPU. And here's how you define the same buffer with Type GPU. Type GPU utilizes type information to compute the shader logic layout, a memory layout. But the best part is, instead of using plain string to write shaders, you can use TypeScript. It uses under the hood the smart bubble plugin that transforms your TypeScript code into plain WGL, uh, WGSL string shader, similar to what reanimated plugin does with Worklets. The, uh, the team at TypeGPU has created an excellent documentation with many interactive examples. I really recommend you to check it out, as well as their video on the YouTube channel. But WebGPU isn't just about rendering things. It also supports general computing through compute shaders, which can be useful for tasks such as AI model evaluation. Like in this example, once again, from Type GPU docs, they have sent model weights to GPU and performed the network, neural network in a single compute shader. Also, bigger players also see the potential of a web GPU for AI application, which is why TensorFlow on the web has web GPU backend. What's even better? You can do the same with React Native 2. If you want to hear more about WebGPU in React Native, check out those videos. Uh, from those videos, you can even learn how to properly massage the octopus. Yeah, uh, really. And I hope you are able to feel the potential of WebGPU. And you will give it a try in your application because your app desire to be special. I want you to remember two key things from uh, this talk. The first is, WebGPU is awesome. And the second one, you are awesome. Thank you. Thank you.